the message would be, I go beyond my history, beyond my life experiences, my wounds and my sufferings. I go beyond. This music is a praise to all divine mothers, mothers, goddess, and saints, to the female power within all of us. It will help you to nourish values like love, kindness, and compassion, forgiveness, and tolerance. Therefore, go to the mother within you. Go inside of you, true values, you'll find beyond, beyond. Beyond you is in you, because yeah. you're born with it. Yeah. Yes, I think at the time when I was, when I was singing it, I didn't realize that I was a motherless child. I was about, hmm, I was getting on in my teens, but I felt somehow that I related to being a motherless child. Motherless because not as a child, but more as um, starting from 12 years old forward, I was that without mother or father. So that song related somehow in the back of the mind. And uh, yeah, I got comfort from it. Make heaven my home. I see it as more a philosophy of life and that you're trying, one is trying to move to that stage of belief in order to live the life. My uh, transition from childhood belief in spirituality and in Baptist Church, when I started to practice Buddhism, I realized that another thinking arrived and that was what I call philosophy, um, more science of life. The words uh, that I was saying, when I looked up to find out what am I saying? I know with the Lord's Prayer, I'm asking for help, you are the divine. But I needed something else more than that at the time. So practicing Buddhism took me beyond, beyond the Lord's Prayer into another form of prayer that took care of my daily needs at the time. It took care of um, really the stress, it verbalized that life is about stress and anger and all of the influences of life, took care of those where at the time of doing the Lord's Prayer, I had never really learned really what it meant except our Father who art in heaven, hallowed would be thy name. Buddhism took me to another place, I feel. And as an older woman coming from a young girl, However, I still do both. I do the Lord's Prayer, and then I do my, my, my chanting. When Buddhism was offered to me, I was in a major world of stress and people that would come to me would say why do you stay in this environment in this situation and my answer was I have I have no way of getting out of this situation at the moment no place to go no way of thinking how to get there because I had children and all and then finally someone came and they said why don't you practice why don't you try chanting it was chanting I didn't see there was any sin involved. I looked up the words that I was saying. I couldn't at the time really learn, but I felt, well, it must be good and clean. It's just basically, nam myoho renge kyo. Give me the strength to, and the knowledge to how to go forward and pass this time in my life. It made sense to me. So I felt like religions are related. It doesn't matter what country. It just matters 
what matters that you're saying different words, but it all goes, it all works one way. So I took it like that. I continued to do the Lord's Prayer, and then I started to chant Nam Yo Ringi Kyo, and I continue that in my life. So what took care of me as a child of the Lord's Prayer continued, and also I moved on to another level, another tongue of getting to that place inside of me that helps me make right decisions, helps me live a more peaceful and happy life. the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, love was a different concept in my life because in early days people, people would say learn to love yourself and I thought oh that's a bit egotistical I mean it was that wasn't realistic I mean if you love yourself you were full of yourself and I knew quite a few stars in America that was full of themselves so I didn't didn't take it on the level of where it really was then later on in life as I started to achieve goals I realized accepting the love in your life accepting what was there that I didn't know that was there that is that mother within, something that takes care of you. That's instinct, I think. Mother, um, a mother's love, everybody speaks about it, but everybody doesn't have a mother's love. But the mother's love is there because she is the creator. She brings forth life onto the planet. And um, there is a love, whether a child is given away or whether a child is kept, there is a love that is given to that child inside of the mother before it even comes to the planet. So I received later in life the idea and the knowledge of mother within, mother's love. That be became a deeper meaning and still holds true. Sometimes people use sympathy. They sing from their sadness. The slaves from the past, all, all it was so much heart and sadness in it. But there's another singing where you sing with joy. And that is when you move from singing from sorrow and sadness and depression into the joy of singing, the pleasure of singing. People ask, how does it feel when you, when you sing it? It doesn't make you feel like a bird and jumping. It's an inner, uh, I have to say spirit, it's a spirit within you that has the pleasure of just letting singing heal you or take you into a place of pleasure. That's my idea of it. I see people in the front row of my concerts they're not jumping singing like the young. They're sitting there watching, watching me, look, looking at the energy of my emotions inside coming through. And sometimes I wonder, what is it that I'm doing that make them look? Is it you know, stardom? Is it something? And I receive letters explaining that that is what they got. They really got the in the inner part of me the inside of me from wherever it comes so it's almost magical when you try to describe it i never had singing training i can only describe it as an unknown musical person uh, knowledge wise from music came with me when i came here is a movement of women that has been suppressed and pushed aside. And I think it's natural that Mother Earth 
allowed us to come forward with this knowledge and to fight for that position, the burning of the bra. That was in America, of course. But all of that was the movement of women. This will catch on because of women, because the movement of women. I don't know where it's going, but I think it's gonna, it will lead us to the place of where we need to be, where the earth needs to be today. Women are the right ones to take it because there is that fact that we give birth and that we give love and that it's mother's love that we're trying to spread anyway on the planet. To love unconditionally is a job. One must be very spiritually connected to live by the rule of unconditional love. Unconditional love, I believe, is also a test where you've passed the borders of the land, the borders of what life offers you. There's a learning. We come here to learn. And we have to, we have to, we must um, get to a certain plateau in our lives spiritually to learn how to love unconditionally and to actually find out what it means. It means to push aside whatever is done to you and you must love. Now, you think you'd have to be a saint. I mean, everybody would say, yes, this condition of love, go away from me with that at certain times in your life. But you must reach another plateau spiritually. That's, that's a job. Unconditional love is, no matter what is given you, you can look past and love. No strings attached. <laughs>